All right, so I'm back with the 2003 Snapper, and so all the videos are going to be in a folder for this thing. Uh, so this video, we're going to kind of do a tune-up. All right, we're going to get started on that and really get it running a little bit better. We're still going to need to do the carburetor, which is going to be another video, but we're going to go through the ignition. Uh, I'm going to go check out the valves. We'll do a quick, you know, a quick run-in test just to see. Uh, and just take it to the next step. There'll be some tips and tricks in there as well. Um, you know, kind of get everything cleaned up. Fellas, if you can get if you can get a machine like this, I didn't pay much. Thanks, Mike. Um, I in fact I had a few others that I passed up last year, and I wish I had more money because I'd buy more of them. As much as I complain about them, because well, they've got a snowblower transmission. Um, they are pretty decent machines. They're hard to date. You got to date them by the motor, and I'll show you a little bit about that. Although I didn't get great shots, but I'll talk a little bit about it. Um, you go online and just you know look for how to date uh, a Briggs engine. Uh, for example, most of these have Briggs. Although I wouldn't be surprised if a Cola or something. I don't think I don't think they ever put any other motor than a Briggs and maybe a Cola. I, I don't think I've ever seen one with uh, a Takumi, but that maybe that was the much older ones. These newer ones in the late '90s and early 2000s, they're out there. They're not they're not expensive, and it's built a little bit better than that green Craftsman that I've been playing with. That has a Takumi engine on it. Um, that one's built pretty well. It's got a real transmission in it, but you know, the body isn't as strong and it, it's, you know, certain things are not made as nice as the snappers. So for a small yard like mine, right, my yard is, it's big, but it's, you know, it's bigger for where I am, but it's not like an acre or something. That would be too big. I think that would be, you'd probably kill the machine. Uh, but for these sort of somewhat smaller, like maybe a little bit bigger than you'd want to use a regular lawnmower for, uh, not that you don't, can or shouldn't or won't. I do, but, you know, I'm on my feet every day, and um, and then, you know, come the weekends, I'm exhausted, I'm getting older, and I still have, I maybe want to do the garden, maybe I want to weed whack, there's other stuff to be done. It's nice to be able to get on one of these machines and just, you know, sort of tool around and make a nice cut, and they're built fairly well, like the, the, the metal and fit, you know, the fitments of it, uh, they're pretty strong, but like this one, as in many of the machines that I get, as age and neglect takes its toll on anything. And if you can pick up one of these relatively cheap, it's certainly worth the effort. So stay with me on this project. Eventually I'll be able to release all of them on this, this particular one, the 2003, because it, it did need a whole bunch of different things, but they have good bones. Let's get to work. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so I pulled the plug it's wet. See how wet it is? So there's just no way that's going to fire right. All right, we'll get this cleaned up. I'll, I'll, I have another plug. I'll put another plug in it. It was kind of loose, too. It wasn't like loose, loose, but it, it was not tight. And you can see the rust forming. This thing's not been out. So next step, uh, we're going to want to pull this off, definitely. Um, we need to see what the valves are doing. It's been or, this motor's been around for a while, and it probably hasn't been serviced. Doesn't look like it's ever been off. I see no sign of any RTV. But before we get to that, we know she's sparking, but we're going to clean up and regap. So that means I want to pull this off, and I'll show you. I want to make sure everything is clean. The flywheel is clean. Everything there is good to go. The magnets are cleaned off. Um, they're pretty nasty, and so that's going to make a bit of a mess. Let's get started on that. I'm going to pull this off first. I just want to kind of yank that coil wire off, right, the control wire, before we go any further. And we'll check that too, because sometimes these get galled on there with rust. Yeah, she's a little nasty. I'm going to put some of my cleaner in that, let it soak, and then I'll pull the coil off and we'll bring it over. i got to check in here too. Looks okay in there. I don't see, look for rust or anything that might be in there. By the way, you see, this is my Alumabrite that I talk about all the time. It's a aluminum cleaner. We use it for welding. Uh, aluminum, it's, it's great for stainless steel, brass. It's, it's great on these contacts. But if you wanted to get some of this nastiness off, if you wanted to make your engine a little prettier, you could. You could actually put that stuff on there, let it sit, brush it on a little bit, maybe with a toothbrush, whatever, bring it outside, hose it off. And if you clear coat, um, it'll a lot of that nasty... Really, it's an oxidation. It's a white oxidation. So it's a kind of aluminum rust. A lot of that will come off. Start off with some super clean and get it nice and clean, no grease, and then put that acid on. Um, I don't think I'm going to do that, but 
Uh, if it was outside, I might think about it. But we'll see. If it needs if it needs to be cleaned, I'll do it. Um, depends on how dirty I get this machine while I'm working on it. Let's get this off. It's time to come from over here. It's a little easier to work. I'm going to use a 60 grit abrasive disc first. But then I'm going to finish up, and I'll show you where. I'm going to finish up with a Scotch Bright disc. All right, we'll be back in a bit. So now I switch to this is an abrasive pad, Scotch Bright pad. We're going to do the tops of these. These are real nasty. That's your grounding circuit or the return circuit for the coil. Perfect. Nice and polished. Let me get you in close and I'll show you how I like it. And also, I did the coil, right? Just here. This is where we're the mating surface, right, for the grounding or the connection points. And a little bit there, right, with the wire wheel. And that, that's all I do. That's all that's necessary. And now we'll have good connections here. And we won't have any rust in our way because we're going to get a good tight 10 thousandths, 12 thousandths. On a machine like this, you could probably go with 12 thousandths because um, there is no brake like on a lawnmower. So there's nothing to keep this surface clean. It will get, it'll come back this rusty nasty crap and so 12 thousandths it'll kind of last a little longer and you'll still get a good spark so I'm going to take it up to 12 uh, we also want to lubricate the screws right so we want to make sure we've got some oil on these you don't want to over tighten it so let's get to that I got a little bit of oil on the threads let's plug this guy back We got a good connection. I blew out that connector. I have to pull on out the acid that I put in it. I'm just going to finger tight, you know, kind of like, you know, loosely tighten this. You don't have to do that, uh, this this kind of thing all that often. It, this is a full serve. It's been a lot of years since anybody's really done anything to this, so that's why we're going through the full gamut, tightening up enough so that the magnet doesn't pull the armature in yet. All right, good. Now we'll line up the magnets. I forgot to show you guys how clean that was. Oh well, I'm busy here. Let's put our 12 thousandths in. All right, just hold it. Now loosen it up so that the magnet sucks in the magnetron. Okay, that's in. Tighten it up. All right, I'm just gonna put another wrench on that. Hold on. So I'm gonna use my quarter inch drive stubby because uh, you don't want to make this too tight. You'll, you'll rip out the threads. But these are wafers and they do need to kind of stack up and compress. So just give them a minute. Remember they're a little old and rusty. If you want, you could lubricate it a little. Now I'll show you another little trick. Now that's all cleaned off, if you want, and because this is, you know, it's not, not a snow machine, but take your chain wax. All right, that'll stop it. And you can also put the chain wax on the whole, get it on the gears too. Down where the gear is, right? Because you got your electric starter. We'll quiet things down, reduce a little bit of wear. If you want, you can put a little bit of white grease on those gears. Okay, that looks good. And that'll actually add some lubrication and also it'll protect it from the weather. It won't get so rusty so fast. So it might stay like that. It's all about buying time, fellas. It's, that's all you can do is buy time with this stuff. You're servicing it. Mother nature and gravity and just, you know, age is going to go back at it. Um, another thing I did too with the starter motor is I just put oil, right? No, nothing other than oil, motor oil. Um, otherwise it will get sticky. And particularly, 
Now it's not so bad in the summertime, but for like a winter machine, you, if, you, if it's not oiled, it won't work. And if you use anything other than oil, it won't work. The summer machines like this, you could probably get away with a little bit of chain wax or chain lube, but I find oil works, uh, just motor oil. And like I said, if you want to brush a little bit of white grease on here, you know, now's your time before we cover it up. Uh, we want to do the valves next. Start taking the valve cover off. The bolts are loose. Yeah, I got some of this acid here. Let's let that soak for a minute. Because the best way to date one of these snapper machines is through the motor. And on these motors, uh, this is generally where the date is. So let that sit on there for a minute. And we'll work it with a brush. Yeah, I'm starting to see it. Hey, look clean up. Let's give that a minute and we'll be back. But I'm gonna take this cover off. All right, I can see it now, I can read it. So I'm gonna show you that a little bit. That's all loose. Show you how to read that. It's 2003. Take some of my transmission fluid mix. It's very good at like a release agent. It's just stuck on this side. I see some things they don't like. This got water in it. Oh my. Uh oh, we might have a motor issue. I think I'm going to rip the gasket, especially down here. You can see the crud? See all the crud down here, guys? And I'll get you a better look. But, got rust here. So, we got to change that oil, too. But all of this is all beat. Let's pull this gasket off. And we'll probably just RTV it. All of this in here, this is all rust. And, and water. So, I'm going to try to wash some of that out as best I can. Put the tray underneath. Spray it up a little bit. She wants to run, so hopefully the damage isn't great. It looks like it just is up here, probably from sitting. So another reason why you want the top off and the plug out so you can get to it. All right, let me uh, let me clean this up a little, and I'll be back. We're going to just spray it so it doesn't go in. We'll kind of just tissues and a rag and a screwdriver and try to pull out what we can. We might, I think we might have caught it just in time. Alright, we got to clean this first. Look at that. that that's not good. Alright, I'm going to clean this off. Get it all depuked. And then we want to put a bead of cork on that and let it sit for at least a half an hour. All right, nice and clean. We're going to put the bead on, but I don't know if you can see it. It's very hard to see, but this is the code over here. I think it's about 15 digits. So the first two numbers, this is 03, all right? So that's the year. So if it was like a 99, it would be 9 something, like 99. But that's 2003, and then the next one is an 03. That's probably the month. Um, and then I think it gets into days, and then where it was manufactured with a Z and an A. But it's 2003, so look for the code on these overheads, and you can decipher it. I'll put up a link and a little screenshot to help you guys out. i got to get the bead on now, so I'm just going to do a light bead with my finger, and I'll show you when I'm done. All right. I didn't show up. I just run some across the top and I flatten it with my finger. You can see it's not a lot, right? We gotta let this air set. We need the skin. The skin becomes our first piece of gasket. If you just put it on right now and you were to tighten it, you would just muse that out all over the place and you'd have nothing. So we need that to skin up for about a half hour. I'm gonna go take a timestamp. I can go take a quick break and we're gonna come back and then we'll work on the valves. All right, just to get 
a little bit more familiar with with the uh, motor all right i'm going to run a compression test on it so let me see i don't know if you're going to be able to see it but uh, let me see what it is that's not bad about 125 guys okay and we can see she's puking oil which is good all right good we got some oil puked excellent we'll flush some of that junk out all right let me set up let me clean up a little bit too we'll set up for the valves now i'm gonna feel a bit more comfortable i mean she kicked he said it ran but I, you know look I, you always got to go to what you find out all right so you need a 10 millimeter all right for the outside nut and this is a t20 you can also use an allen a lot of times if you don't have torx but you should should get one all right so now we want to turn it over by hand and let's watch the valve events see where we are okay so this is your exhaust top one is exhaust bottom one is intake and let's just see what we got up oh, we see an intake movement i saw that release and there's an exhaust event. Okay, and there's an intake event. And we're going to be looking for the magnet, right? Because that magnet should come up, and that'll be our top dead center. Okay, intake closed. A little bump. Here comes the magnet. It's up over here. And it's a total relaxation. And we're in line with the magnet. And they tell you to go about a quarter inch in. So if you had a, a screwdriver or a pencil is a better thing, um, you'd see. So I'm just going to come past a little bit top dead center. They want you to be about a quarter inch if you were to measure the piston. It should really tell you what it is in degrees. But we're going to come past a little bit. And that's what they're suggesting. And that's typically what I do. But you could check it both ways. Now about two to four maybe five max on intake and four to seven to eight max so it's a four and let's see what we have on our intake okay that's four All right probably a little closer to five but that's not bad that feels pretty good yeah now I'm just gonna stick that four in there nope let's go up to seven Is a is a seven. That's max, really. And yeah, that's about right. All right, let's try six. Let's see how six feels on the exhaust. Yeah, it could, it could be a little tighter, but that's not bad. That's pretty damn good. All right, now what we're going to do? We don't have to adjust it. We're just going to check for tight. Okay. All right, I made it a little bit tighter. And that'll close the clearance down a little bit. What that's doing, the fulcrum is the outer nut. It's actually a fulcrum. It's got a ball on the end of it. And the jam nut is the center. And what I just did, right, by tightening it down, I pulled the whole assembly in closer to the stud, the, the uh, rocker stud. And it would make it a little bit tighter. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, it definitely did. So that is much nicer. So we're good. Yeah, because that's what it needed. It needed to be just, here's a four, here's a three for the intake. That's still not bad. Let's see, that's, that's loose. So four. The intake might need a little bit. No, nope, no, we're good. It, it's, it's fine. All right, no problems here. Uh, it's been at least a half an hour. And by the way, it puked out a little bit of oil, which I ran a Q-tip in there. Also ran some tissues up in that area, and then I ran the Q-tip, and it pulled out more yuck. So we were able to kind of... Okay? There's still a little bit of puke. So I'm glad it kind of puked out a little bit. But 
what we're going to need to do is really empty. See, there's still some more junk in there. We're going to really need to empty out that oil. I guess we'll run it for a little bit because it is cleaner oil. He did change it. All right, let me get the cover on and we'll get uh, a new plug or some kind of good replacement plug. And we'll get the plug in there and I'll show you that in a bit. Okay, fellas, I lightly snugged it, lightly. It's all tacked up because it's going to last, and I'm going to, you know, this is going to, project's going to run until tomorrow, right? And that might be the case. Be patient. Or go run out and try to find that gasket. Good luck finding that gasket. You're going to have to order it. So you're still going to have to be patient, all right? Unless you have stock of them, which is great. Good for you. I'm going to go dig up a plug, get the plug in. Let me prep out. I also, I don't know if he replaced that fuel filter, but I want to put a fresh filter in. There's no clamps on any of this, so we're going to get some clamps. Uh, and then we're just going to fill it up. We'll fill up the fuel hose uh, with liquids. And we'll give it a test. All right, just real quick. I got a nice, nice. I'm just going to put a little anti-seize on it. I set it to 30, All right? Usually I go a little under 30, but these are bigger motors. They require a little bit bigger gap. Sweet. All right, we're just going to run it quick, in neutral, as best as I can manage. Hopefully it doesn't go shooting off the table. All right, I got a filter, a new filter in, and I just kind of tweaked the fuel lines a little bit, got my clamps on them. So we're ready there. I got a little bit of, I put gas down the fuel line, and it's full. And I'm not going to bring the RPMs up too much, just a little bit, right? So this is like idle. So we're just going to go here. And we'll prime it, give it a put a little prime in there. There's probably still plenty in the gas tank, but let's just see what happens. That's on good enough. It should kick. So it's not picking up the fuel out of the carburetor and trying to spray fuel in there. I don't know if you could see it. I don't have the camera on the right angle, but it's blowing the fuel. The fan is blowing the fuel all over. Um, but it sounded good. Okay, so we got to pull the carb off. Uh, possibly something, some of that junk in the tank or whatever came down into the carburetor may have gotten past that crappy filter, may have already been in that crappy filter. But you notice how quiet and she sounded fine, right? She started right up. So I think we're okay. Let it air out in here and I will see you guys tomorrow. Um, so for, depending on how I split up the video, if you just want to see like a check on the valves or whatever, um, that part of the video is done. Uh, check on the valves, check when I did the wiring, ignition, um, coil, troubleshooting of the electric, so I guess however I tie that video in or whatever, I think we're done there, right? We don't need to do anything else. And stay tuned for the other parts, depending on how I set up the video for the rest of it. We got to get in here and get this thing finished up.